all three of those works, in one way or the other, uh, relate to Masterworks Chorale, either the concert that we are broadcasting tomorrow evening at 8 o'clock, that's their Classics concert, which took place last April, or their upcoming Collage concert, which takes place this Saturday, in fact, June 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. at the Valentine Theater. You can get a hold of them at 419-242-2787. Go online to the website if you like, valentinetheater.com. I should mention Masterworks Chorale is a sponsor of FM91, and I'm glad to welcome right here in the studio the artistic director of Masterworks Chorale, Timothy Clater. Welcome. Glad Tim. to be here, Brad. Thanks for having me. We're going to have a little classical conversation and talk about some of the music on these programs. And I am fascinated with this idea of the collage, which really is just what it sounds like. It's a lot of different things coming together on the stage. Can you kind of paint a picture for us of what these concerts are about? Yeah, for sure. This third concert, a third major concert of the season each year is the collage, and we invite local artists and ensembles to join us and try to design a program that moves pretty seamlessly between uh, pieces and ensembles. We'll mm -hmm. have the uh, Junior Choral Society. This is a children's choir based in Archbold, and we'll have the Ballet Theater of Toledo, and we'll also have a vocal soloist, professional soloist, so the the textures and the, the contours of the program can shift in these beautiful ways. And it's at the Valentine Theater, as you said, uh, so theatrically lit and um, in this beautiful historic space. It's yeah. Like, yeah, and you perform, I mean, everything just kind of runs into the other, right? I mean, Pretty you much. Have, you yeah, know. We, we, we're not super strict about don't ever applaud. We want, to, <laughs> we, we, we want that feedback too. But, right. but there are times in the program where we try uh, uh, certainly to minimize the space between things and to take uh, listeners on a kind of a journey. I like to program concerts in which there isn't applause for a little bit of time because uh, musically and emotionally we can get to a different place if we don't interrupt it with applause. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that programming philosophy? Because uh, I know you've had sort of an overarching theme for this season, and this concert in particular has a theme to it. Tell us what the theme is and has been over mm -hmm. this past year yeah, yeah. And, and how you've uh, chosen the music to go with it. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of an expansion of one of my programming philosophies. I like to, to make concert programs in which we hear a few pieces in a row and the pieces can then speak to each other or provide context and take us on this journey. And then I expanded that to uh, could we do this uh, across multiple concerts? Could we have a theme for a concert season? And I've done that now a few years in a row. Uh, and this year the season was um, One World, Many Voices. Mm. And we uh, picked up the idea that there's a great diversity among people uh, in faith and philosophy and uh, way of life. And yet there are some very common uh, common things among us, uh, the desire to love and be loved, a desire for community and peace. Um, and so in the first concert, Christmas concert, it was carols from around the world. In the second concert, the classics concert that you said will be rebroadcast tomorrow, this was um, uh, prayers for peace. And so uh, tipped really toward music that was inside the church uh, across many centuries and across uh, multiple languages. And then this concert is What a Wonderful World, in which we talk uh, about uh, everything outside the church, really, the popular music and jazz and folk songs from around the world uh, that talk about how uh, this common respect for each other, this peace that we are praying for in the middle concert, comes to fruition. How do you pick and choose and put together the, the, the program. Let's talk about the program that, that is happening this weekend mm -hmm. specifically because I'm looking at it and there, uh, just the musical numbers alone, there are many of them and they are so varied and coming from lots of different places. I imagine you know, that you have a lot of stuff at, at your fingertips to choose from. How do you whittle that all down and stitch it together yeah, and it's, create it's a it's challenging. I, I think every conductor probably starts with what music speaks to him or her most deeply or mm -hmm. what, what, what meaning resonates with the conductor and, and you work from there and in a program like this and all programs I want there to be some variety but especially in this one that's talking about uh, things from all over the world uh, we wanted to incorporate many languages and many styles. Yeah, so again, the concert is uh, Saturday, June 3rd at 8 o'clock p.m. at the Valentine Theater in downtown Toledo. Uh, I'm sure that you can get tickets at the door. If you want to call up the box office ahead of time, 
That phone number is 419-242-2787, or you can go online to their website at valentinetheater.com. They spell theater uh, the British way, T-R-E at the end instead of T-E-R, just so you know. Timothy Clater, my guest for a, a classical conversation about Masterworks Chorale, which really is a musical institution here in our area. You've been with them since 2013, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, I, th- I think I did, as a substitute conductor, the Christmas concert even before that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you, you have a nice little history that you're building yeah. with, with the group, and that's uh, that's wonderful. Now, I know that uh, the chorale is involved in, in lots of other activities in the area, and I want to talk about that as well. But first, let's uh, take a little musical pause here mm-hmm. and listen to some of the music that will be heard on the broadcast tomorrow evening. We're, we're getting sort of a double dip of Masterworks Chorale this week, uh, Thursday night broadcast, and of course the Saturday live concert, which will be broadcast here, but not for several weeks yet. So uh, this is an excerpt from the Mass uh, in D minor of Joseph Haydn, uh, known as the Lord Nelson Mass. Originally, it was the, the Mass in the time of Apprehension. Yeah, he's uh, in Angusti, yeah. yes, right. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was a time when uh, Vienna was uh, under assault by uh, Napoleon, increasingly. Exactly. Yeah. Right, and and it got the Lord Nelson moniker because uh, perhaps that first performance was at the time that they heard then from Lord Nelson about his victory uh, yeah. far south and in, in Egypt. Yes, right. right the the right. Battle of the Nile. Yeah, and as I understand it, uh, Lord Nelson actually made his way out to uh, Esterhazy. Uh, for a so, performance. Yeah, so we yeah. believe, yeah, we believe yeah. he heard a performance yeah, there. That's a great story. Well, we're going to hear the Gloria from that mass. This is a recording from the English Baroque soloists, John Elliott Gardner conducting, and the Monteverdi Choir here on FM 91. that music became a cause for celebration and joy instead of uh, uh, an expression of apprehension, as it mm-hmm. was originally titled by Joseph Haydn. The Mass Number 11, also called the Lord Nelson Mass, renamed, as it were, after Lord Nelson vanquished Napoleon, at least uh, temporarily, in uh, Egypt at the Battle of the Nile. That was the English Baroque Soloists, uh, directed by John Elliott Gardner, and the Monteverdi Choir. Uh, We also heard a couple of uh, singers there, Donna Brown, soprano, and baritone Gerald Finley. That's music that you can hear tomorrow evening right here on FM 91 at 8 o'clock, the Masterworks Chorale of Toledo and their Classics Concert. That'll be broadcast right here on FM 91. And this Saturday, if you want to get the live uh, immersive experience, then uh, go to the Valentine Theater at 8 o'clock on Saturday, June 3rd for their collage concert, their last concert of the 2017 season. It's entitled, What a Wonderful World. Artistic Director Timothy Clater has been here with me in the studio. We're going to talk a little bit more about Masterworks Chorale. That box office number again is at 419-242-2787 or go online to Valentine Theater, theater with a T-R-E at the end, dot com. Tim Clater, uh, we were talking about uh, languages and the challenge that that your group must face, I mean, these are not professional singers that have spent their entire lives immersed in foreign languages. And, and we're not talking just about, uh, y- you know, French and German and Italian and what have you, but we're talking about Latin and various accents in Latin. Indeed, this, yeah. The same yeah. words pronounced in different ways. Right. That last concert, the, the classics concert, uh, one of the ways that we portrayed the variety across centuries was that um, 
classical composers uh, long ago, hundreds of years ago, uh, worked with the idiom of Latin that was uh, local. And so you would get pronunciations of Latin that were tipped by the um, mother tongue in that area. So mm. Latin that would sound more Germanic, or you would apply German pronunciation rules to those letters, or Latin that sounded uh, French, or, or Latin that sounded Italian. That's the one we think of most. And yeah, in that last classics concert, that was a, a big hurdle for us to sing the same text with a variety of pronunciations instead of letatus sum in Latin, uh, in church Latin, Roman Latin. It's letatis som in French Latin, for instance. Okay, well, you lost and, me already. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And this concert coming up, though, it's interesting that you bring that up because uh, if one decides to do uh, folk songs from all over the globe, then you're embracing a, a variety of languages. And you're right, yeah. this is a big challenge for, for anyone professionals is alike uh, to manage all these different languages on this program. Well, I imagine, I mean, of course, English has all different kinds of accents, so it's a similar true, thing. True, true, yeah. It, mm-hmm. I, but I don't know that you would sing necessarily, you know, a song that, that came from Georgia differently than one that right. came from Perhaps Chicago. Perhaps not, or, yes, yes. I don't know. That, that's uh, It seems like a really interesting uh, aspect of what folks have to learn. Now, the, there's an audition process to get into the crowd, right? Oh, there is. Yeah, every August uh, auditions are held, and you could check our w- website, masterworkstoledo.com, for that schedule. Um, this is, as you, as you said, a non-professional group, but uh, it is a select group, and its uh, mission is to provide for the community to, to connect lives uh, uh, through choral music, but that includes the mission of uh, high performance, high-quality performance. Yeah. How often do you uh, rehearse with them? Two and a quarter hours once a week. Wow. So Monday that's nights. That's a real commitment. It, it is, for, yes. For many yes. people. And, and they're accustomed to working on the music between. I mean, to, to perform at this level, uh, rehearsing just once a week requires an outside of rehearsal commitment yeah. for the singers, too. Yeah. Well, it, I'm sure it must be very rewarding for the folks that, uh, that do it and enjoy it, because I know there have been some real long-term members, long-term supporters as well. There I are, mean. yes, members who have been in the group for decades, in yeah. fact. Yeah, yeah. Talk a little bit about uh, some of the collaborations that go on with uh, Masterworks Chorale in the community. I mean, I know you're more than just a performing organization. You really have, mm-hmm. uh, you know, ex- you have your branches extended into other parts of the of the community. Sure, yeah. There, uh, there is a good outreach component in this organization, and one of the things is that uh, every December we take a small group to the Youth Treatment Center in Toledo and uh, do some music making, do some interaction with the uh, uh, young people there. Uh, we sing for the tree lighting at the zoo for zoo lights. That's another mm-hmm. kind of community thing. But really, uh, an initiative that I particularly like is a high school internship program that we've had running now for a number of years. Uh, for each concert, we'll accept up to four high school students uh, to come and sit, you know, beside these experienced and older members and sing this music perhaps at, at a level that's higher than they might achieve in their own schools and kind of live that experience for a concert cycle and wow. then perform with us uh, at the concert. And yeah, that's been a really great experience for many students and especially homeschool students. That's a, a real outlet for them, I think. Yeah. Um, and there is in the works uh, 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 an idea to expand that connection to high school students with some kind of high school choral festival. Uh, this would be 2018, yeah. we hope. Well, uh, that's great. I mean, I think any aspect whatsoever of bringing uh, music and especially uh, concert music to young people mm. and, and getting them Indeed. involved, right. and getting them to perform it, because that, that's really how it makes uh, you know an impression on young people, and young people, as we know, turn into adults, <laughs> and uh, they yes. can learn to uh, appreciate and enjoy and uh, actually create uh, some of that music right. as well. Yeah, I think it's a special experience to be on the inside of that. I mean, it's one thing to go to a concert that has this kind of music uh, at the Classics concert, but another as a high school student to have had that experience yeah. with, with instruments and a variety of languages and all these different styles. My guest is uh, Timothy Clater, the Artistic Director of the Masterworks Chorale at Toledo. The concert is Saturday, June 3rd at the Valentine Theater. It's at 8 o'clock p.m. This is one of those uh, collage concerts. If you've not been before, then Tim talked a little bit earlier about what to expect, but there's a lot of stuff going on. There's singing, there's dancing, mm-hmm. uh, and and it's a very theatrical production. Right, uh, yeah, production. that's one of the things I like about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so this is a, a wonderful opportunity to see the Masterworks Chorale. 
The box office number is 419-242-2787. You can go online to their website, valentinetheater.com. As I said before, theater with a T-R-E at the end. Tim, before we go, tell us a little bit about uh, your background and how you got involved with uh, Masterworks. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I grew up with music in my family long ago and um, actually aimed at a science career before I figured out that this was really my passion and calling and uh, have taught uh, music in colleges for 20 plus years at this point yeah. and uh, landed here in Toledo uh, about eight, nine years ago and uh was really impressed with what's going on with Masterworks Chorale, and it just happened to open uh, three or four years ago, as you said. Um, And uh, I've enjoyed working with them ever since. I mean, it's a great bunch of people, and it's it's a nice compliment to the work that I do at the university uh, to be able to work with adults who uh, sometimes can understand the poetry because of the life experience they have in ways that the younger students cannot. That's that's a rewarding thing. Uh, you say university, you mean Bowling Green. Bowling Green right? State University. State yeah. university. Mm-hmm. Timothy Clater, conductor of the Masterworks Chorale, their artistic director, in fact, uh, leading the concert, the Collage Concert, Saturday, June 3rd. That's coming up this Saturday at 8 o'clock p.m. at the Valentine Theater. Again, 419-242-2787 or valentinetheater.com. And Tim, best of luck to you and to the uh, Chorale for a, a wonderful uh, program. We'll be broadcasting it Later in June, I believe, a little bit later this season, we'll, we'll have it on the air. But the thing about the collage concert is it's so visual yeah. as well. It, so. Yeah, it's worth going to see live. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thanks well, for having me, Brad. Uh, great. Thanks for uh, appearing here on uh, FM 91. Appreciate your time. I'll send you out with uh, a little cut from one of the Masterworks Chorale's uh, recordings. This is a piece called What's Sweeter Music by John Rutter. Donna Tozer Whiffley conducting the Masterworks Chorale in this recording. Here on FM 91. 